Good evening. We're going to start this evening. Thank you. Pursuant to New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 104-7, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by advertising such notice in the Home News Tribune, the Asbury Park Press, the Board Office, the Schools, and on Cablevision Channel 118 and Verizon Vios Channel 24, and by, by filing such notice with the Township Clerk. The meeting was scheduled for Tuesday, March 20th, 2018. The Board will take formal action on payment of bills and other agenda items. The Old Bridge Township Board of Education acknowledges that the law of this state establishes that members of the public, including members of the board, have the right to record public board meetings using audio or video recording devices, provided that that active recording does not interfere with the business of this public board meeting. Therefore, the board makes it known that any such recording is to be considered the private recording of the individual and in no manner represents the official record of this board. The board therefore takes no responsibility for such private recording and completely disavows any future use. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Mayor. Cool. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Callie. Present. DeCaro. Present. DePrima. Here. Dinoff. Present. Lent. Present. Reed. Present. Singh. Sulikowski? Present. Dunn? Present. Quorum exists. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's remain standing for a moment of silence. In memory of the board acknowledge the death of Louise Morris, retired teacher, and express its deepest sympathy to her family and friends. Thank you. Board member Jill DeCali will uh, cite the Code of Ethics for the month of March. The Code of Ethics highlight of the month. The board member will confine his or her board action to policy making, planning, and appraisal, and help to frame policies and plans only after the board has consulted those who will be affected by them. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Moving forward, approval of the minutes. Callie May I have a motion, please? Callie will move. Dinoff will second. Thank you. Any discussion or concerns or changes? Mr. Mayor, roll call, please. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes, but I abstain from both parts of February 20th. I'm sorry, which ones you abstain? Uh, both parts. Both parts of February 20th, the regular and closed. Do you abstain for the, the 13th or the 20th? 20th. Okay. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolution 1 passes. Very well, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Report of the student representative to the board. I don't see him this evening. Uh, he's con competing in a tri meet at Hillsborough High School this evening and could not make it, but he sends his best. Wonderful, fantastic. Moving forward, recognition. Mr. Sedino. We have two items under recognition this evening. One is, uh, number one, we are going to administratively remove and uh, reassign it to the April meeting. Uh, the honoree, Miss Molly, could not make it this evening. Um, and it's really quite an honor for her, so we want to make sure that we do recognize her in April. So we're going to move to recognition item number two, uh, which is move the board to recognize and thank the Old Bridge Police Department uh, Officer Benevolent Association number 127 for their donation of recess equipment for all 12 district elementary schools. A representative from each elementary school 
will accept this very generous donation, uh, benefiting our children in our, each school. The Old Bridge Board of Education and the Old Bridge Police Department continue to share a partnership that is truly advantageous to the entire community. Thank you. So if I have the officers from PBA 127, please come to the podium. And any representatives from the schools that are here to receive uh, the re recess equipment, please come up to the stage. I'm Vinny Galgano, the uh, Vice President of PBA Local 127, alongside our State Delegate Jim Ford and Officer Pat D'Onofrio. On behalf of the PBA, we'd like to make this donation of the recreation equipment to all 12 of the uh, elementary schools in the township, public elementary schools. Uh, each school is going to get a package of soccer balls, um, kickballs, a paddle ball set, um, jump ropes, hula hoop set with uh, a storage bag. Um, you know, we're really proud of the schools, the job that they do, and we just want to give something back to the community and the, and the students. So please accept our uh, donation on behalf of the PBA. Thank you. It's always a wonderful thing to recognize such wonderful contributions to our community by our incredibly brave police officers and the 127, so thank you. May I have a motion on item number two for recognition? Reed motion. Thank you, Mr. Reed. May I have a second? Second. Carol Lent. Okay, I see Ms. Uh, Lent. Lent and also Jill DeCaro. So uh, any concerns or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. Dunn? Absolutely yes. Resolution 2 passes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're just going to pause for a few minutes until uh, the uh, arena is cleared.
Okay, we're going to reconvene the meeting right now. So we'll move forward to the uh, superintendent's report. At this point, I would like to have our director, executive director of special education, uh, Dr. James Tuey, uh, provide us with a report on our special educational programs. He just he just stepped out, right? <laughs> that is interesting. Okay. So we can come back if necessary. I think we'll have to come back. Very I don't good. think he was going to be that benevolent and walk out with <laughs> stuff. So that's we'll, okay. We'll we'll come back to him, um, and we'll go from there. Absolutely. Thank you. Do we have progress towards goals? It's all included in that. All included. Moving forward, Mr. Mara, any correspondence? No correspondence. No correspondence. And we do have special committee reports no, this we'll evening. Do that and then we'll yes. That so who would like to go first? Okay, I will, I guess. Mr. Solikowski? Okay. Yes, thank you. All yours, sir. Okay, we had a uh, curriculum meeting on February 26th. And I would like to thank uh, Jill Cowley and Jill DeCarroll for being here, two other board members, for my support and the support of the committee. Uh, Ms. M Mrs. R Moran uh, shared the results of the K uh, through 12 technology curriculum audit and illustrated ways in which STEAM education is already being implemented in the district. Dr. Cas Cascon requested the audit as per his strategic plan. Examples are Title I after school STEAM program club invention, and summer enrichment program, camp invention. Dr. Cascone and Mrs. Moran discussed the co co collaboration between the technology and the curriculum office Tech Delta team and mapped out the district's vision and strategic plan for the digital learning. The technology Delta team, which is chaired by Dr. Cascone, held a focus group on March 6th at the Overbridge High School cafeteria. The technology Delta team is made up of K through 12 teachers from the Oberge Township Public School System. The purpose of the session was for teachers and administrators to share their thoughts, concerns, and questions, helping and shape the three-year plan, which has been established to map out the district's transition to digital learning. The plan calls for guided practice from early adopted and teacher coaches in the first year. All try in year two and all do in year three. This includes comprehensive and individualized technology professional development for staff, which will be provided throughout the implementation of the program. Uh, Mr. Salantino, uh, he's the supervisor from the Social Studies Department. He uh, briefed the committee on a progress for a social studies technology pilot. Two social studies teachers in grades six through 12 are currently piloting the use of a digital device along with the combination of free online resources to replace traditional textbooks in our school system, which is probably gonna be a big saving over the long run. The pilot will help inform uh, deliberation from the new adoption of social studies curriculum and accompanying resources slated for the year 2020 and 21. I'm sure we'll still have some books. Dr. Tui briefed the committee on the purpose of iReady at the middle school for the next year. In the 2018-19 school year, diagnostic and intervention software iReady will be implemented in special education, complementing the existence of the program in the RTI program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Solikowski. Mr. Dinoff? Thank you, Mr. Dunn. A district technology committee meeting was held on March 13th, and I'm going to read a brief update from the meeting. The committee discussed many district technology updates, including a special education pilot at Old Bridge High School, Fallon Quill's high school teachers leading a special education pilot along with four teachers at the high school using Microsoft Teams on HP 360 touchscreen laptops. This is being used in on, as an online learning management system. Staff training began last May. The pilot teachers began to utilize these Microsoft programs at the beginning of this school year with their students. Ms. Quill surveyed the teachers in September and again in January to compare the comfort level of the devices and Microsoft programs. The survey revealed a 79% increase from September through January in both teacher and teacher perceived student comfort level. Ms. Quills reported that the teachers are happy with the devices and are becoming more and more comfortable um, as they're moving towards a more innovative learning style. The committee also discussed Wi-Fi remediation and heat mapping. 
Mrs. Moran stated that the 10 buildings which required Wi-Fi remediation have been completed. Remediation included changes in the broadcast signal with positioning and the adding or moving of access points to alleviate any dead spots. Our vendor, Inshore Technologies, is currently conducting heat mapping at the remaining buildings. Heat mapping is essential at all buildings to define any vulnerabilities when adding additional vices in the future and to also obtain baseline data. Park prep. Mrs. Moran stated that the, all old and new devices have been prepared with the TestNav app and we are currently undergoing trials based on our Wi-Fi remediation. Our network is adequate to support devices, but bandwidth will be addressed in the next budgetary cycle. The Bring Your Own Device wireless network will be disabled for future trial runs. Digital Learning Day. Mrs. Moran stated that on February 22nd, um, Digital Learning Day was held throughout the district. There were many activities going on. Some included programming Ozobots using iPads, holding mystery Skype discussions and mystery parent Skype discussions across the district, using Google Expedition in the classroom, which gave students the opportunity to experience dinosaurs, meteors, and planets in 3D. An elementary school also visited Monticello via Skype to learn about Thomas Jefferson. A district-wide activity included a Microsoft-provided live classroom Skype session with Henry Winkler and Lynn Oliver, authors of the Henry Zipser series. Overall, it was a very successful and productive day dedicated to digital learning. The committee also was provided with an update on the Delta Team Focus Group, which Mr. Solikowski just covered, but um, it's very good because it speaks to the collaboration among the various departments in the district. Uh, lastly, the committee discussed the Future Ready School Initiative. Mrs. Moran stated that Memorial and Cooper schools are applying for Future Ready School status. Future Ready Schools began as a federal program, and Old Bridge Township has already been recognized as a Future Ready School district. The process encompasses, th encompasses three gears, technology support and infrastructure, classroom instruction and curriculum, and leadership. Each gear has 20 or more indicators that need to be satisfied. Technology integration teacher, Mr. Titmus, stated that using hashtag um, the two hashtags that we have are hashtag EDTechOB and hashtag FutureReadyNJ. Um, and these can be used when tweeting school photos or activities um, involving technology in the curriculum. And this will help district staff isolate information for submission that can be used as evidence when we apply for the Future Ready School status. So it will be very helpful to pass that along to um, teachers just so they know if there's any technology going on in the classroom, any new curriculum initiatives, it really helps them compile the data just by searching by the hashtag. Um, this concludes the technology report. The next technology roundtable committee meeting is scheduled for April 19th, and the next district technology meeting is scheduled for May 17th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Anyone else? Mr. Carroll? Mr. Dunn, I haven't had a meeting recently. I'm sorry. Uh, but I just want, as chair of the Food Services Committee, I just want to remind everybody of the Future Chefs competition this weekend, Saturday, 11 a.m. in the high school cafeteria. Um, fourth and fifth graders from each elementary school assisted by, excuse me, high school culinary students and Sodexo employees will be preparing. I forgot the exact menu item, but it's some kind of Asian dish and it's always on a healthy uh, basis and open to the public, come out and cheer the kids on. There's also a, a small um, raffle that goes on. And just wanted to add, although not on the committee, I too attended Mr. Sulikowski's meeting. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you, then, Mr. Prim. Um, anyone else? Don't see anyone else. So we're going to bring it back to Mr. Cittadino and the superintendent's report. Dr. Tui is making his way to the dais, and we'll hear the report that we're all been waiting for. I apologize. My services were needed to carry some hula hoops into the parking lot. Um, thank you, everybody, Board of Education, Mr. Dino, Dr. Hoker, um, and audience out in the public. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dino and Dr. Hoker had asked to provide a, a summary of the special education uh, department project towards uh, process, progress towards goals. Uh, some of the things that we've accomplished over the past five years kind of go under the radar because um, the needs of so many different components of the district uh, sometimes uh, overtake some of the positive gains that we've made within the special education department um, as a whole. And tonight is an opportunity to provide you with some of those statistics and goals towards that. Uh, Mr. Gajewski, thank you. 
So uh, due to technical difficulties, we do not have the presentation here. I will post the presentation online. Uh, it will be available on the Old Bridge Department of Special Services website um, through the Old Bridge Administration site. Um, but the board members can see the presentation here, and it was shared with the board members via paper in February when we were originally going to do the, the presentation. Can I just interject one and let everybody know what the technical difficulties are? Um, Mr. Gajewski is running the whole studio by himself this evening. He did not want any students to come out uh, as the weather could get a little dicey, so he volunteered to do it by himself. So it's a one-man show back there. Thank you. Okay, next slide, Mr. Gajewski. So just an overview of the programs that we have uh, to offer here to students um, who are eligible for special education and related services in Old Bridge. Uh, we have a, a variety of uh, resources and programs available, and they've expanded exponentially over the course of the past five years. Uh, we have a mainstream setting for students who need slight modifications and accommodations in the classroom. We have in-class support, in-class resource, where one teacher works with a special education teacher to meet the needs of the special education students in that class. We additionally have a pull-out resource. Uh, we have a uh, resource pull-out on the secondary level in all five areas, and we've slowly expanded our elementary programs across the district. Uh, we also have a LLD program, uh, a multiply disabled program. Our ABA program has expanded to preschool elementary and middle schools. And finally, we have a behavior improvement program that this year is grades K through eight. I don't know if that's a slide, Mr. Kajewski. Although that's a good view of Cheesequake School. Okay. Well, on that note, I'm just going to talk. Um, <clears throat> obviously, the technical difficulty extended, although Tom looks great in that, that sweater. Um, so just a general look back on some t statistics. Uh, in September of 2012, approximately five years ago, um, the district had 125 special education teachers, which spanned it from preschool through high school. Uh, 23 child study team members, 13 speech language specialists, our multiply disabled program on the elementary level was in two different buildings, in Voorhees and Carpenter. Uh, we had preschool at three different buildings, and um, we had a variety of different programs at the um, high school to adjust uh, the learning, to address the learning needs of the students um, on the high school level. Um, looking forward to today, and part of the reason why I'm very thankful to Mr. Dino and Dr. Hoker and the Board of Education for being able to provide this information to you today is because we have made sub such substantial gains um, throughout the district in our special education department. Uh, today we are plus 17 teachers over the course of the past five years. We have 142 special education teachers in the district. We have 25 child study team members, which is two more than we had uh, just five years ago. Um, we have an additional speech language specialist. We have an additional supervisor. Um, as well as a supervisor of uh, response to intervention. Uh, we have two BCBAs slash behaviorists in district to address the needs of our students who have some uh, behaviors. Uh, our elementary MD programs have been consolidated at Shepherd School. We also have preschool centralized at two locations. We have multiple uh, teachers trained in Orton Gillingham Reading, and project retraining has been expanded not only to all special education teachers, but to all teachers K through two throughout the district. Additionally, we have a um, successful ShopRite Supermarket Careers program at the high school for students who are uh, in 18 to 20, uh, our 21 year old program. On that program not only provides them with real world experiences, but does provide the students with all of the experiences of running that store um, on their own, inclusive of stocking the shelves, cleaning the store, and also uh, deciding what materials they're gonna sell on a day to day basis. We've implemented numerous data collection tools throughout the district, including the DRA, Achieve 3000, and uh, Rethink Autism. We've had an expansion of our LLD programs to middle and high school. We've developed not only a BD program at the elementary level, but that has expanded to the middle school level and is at Sandberg. And I have to give um, kudos to Dr. Simon and the administrative staff at Sandberg for all the support that they've provided uh, the department over the course of the past uh, year in its implementation um, and development. <clears throat> we have a transition plan planning liaison at the high school. Uh, that's Mrs. Villa. She's done a wonderful job working with um, the transition students um, and developing very comprehensive programs uh, for the students at the high school um, who are going to transition into their uh, post-secondary experience. 
Uh, we have smart boards uh, have been installed in all the elementary buildings. Uh, we have various protocols in place to determine the amount of services that students need on a day-to-day -day basis, and we're constantly monitoring the changing programs that we need to address the students that are coming into the district as a whole. Uh, this year, we implemented a three-to-one three workload model, which allows for our related service providers to give very specific consultation uh, to our classroom general education and special education classroom teachers. Uh, we've also looked at codifying all of the different protocols and procedures in the district by the development of a Department of Special Services uh, manual, which is available online. Um, and it will be available on the same place where you can see this presentation. Uh, we've developed a number of board policies in conjunction with the policy committee, including restraint and seclusion policy and a classroom observation policy. Uh, we have a very um, excellent program running at the high school right now called Effective School Solutions, which is a, a therapeutic program for students who need a little bit more help um, with some supports in the mainstream setting. That's currently at grades 10, 11, and 12. And right now, there's approximately 16 students in that program. Uh, those students receive um, group therapy every day, and they receive uh, individual therapy uh, once a week, as well as the availability of family therapy for all the students in the program. So the parents come in with the students, and they work collaboratively to work through some of those issues the students are having. We have also worked to improve our communication, obviously, um, much like uh, Mr. Shadino does with our Twitter announcements, and maybe we'll get one tonight. Um, but the Twitter announcements uh, all uh, are helpful, but we also have other ways to, to share information, including Remind 101, uh, which is something that the district department uses to share information with, uh, with our students. Um, there's ongoing professional development for all district special education staff. Uh, we have a uh, preschool program evaluation, which occurred this year, and we are tweaking our preschool program as a whole, and we are also restructuring the extended school year for the 2018 school year. So what are the positive impacts on Old Bridge as a whole? And again, um, I, can, I will post this, but some of the positive things that we've seen, we've actually seen a decrease in special education students, students identified as needing special education and related services. Um, for the 2015-16 school year um, to the 2016-17 school year, we did have a decrease of all three students. Um, and for the 16-17 school year to 17-18 school year, we had a decrease of, a, of 20 students. And that's a combination of two things. Um, the development and uh, continued expansion of the RTI program in conjunction with really trying to identify specific areas of needs for the students uh, within the classroom and determining whether or not they're eligible for special education related services. So this has been an overall positive experience because the goal really is to ensure that the students are getting what they need and moving back into the mainstream setting um, as quickly as possible so they can be in the mainstream setting um, if and when that's possible with their peers. Uh, additionally, uh, one of the other positive impacts is the um, decrease in students who are currently um, at a district. Uh, right now, as of today, um, from September of 2012 until today, we've had a 23.9% decrease in out of district uh, students uh, attending out of district programs. And if you date, go back to September of 2009, um, Old Bridge Township Public Schools has seen a 45.9% decrease in out of district placements. Uh, so in 2009, 2010, we had 122 students um, out of district. Um, and as of today, um, we have 67. So that's positive on a number of different uh, levels. Um, obviously, there's a big push in the district to include students in the least restrictive environment, and that's by law something that we have to do. But at the same time, it is very positive that we're able to bring students back into district so they can um, integrate in their community schools and um, learn to work with the students they're going to be um, integrating with over the course of their career, not only during school, but then when they graduate. So anticipated uh, goals for the department moving forward. Um, we are, as uh, was stated by uh, Mr. Uh, Solikowski, we are looking at uh, using iReady in the middle schools as a data monitoring tool. We're also expanding our ICR programs um, at McDivitt and Voorhees uh, to at least grade two. We're re-examining all the technology needs available for special education teachers. Uh, we're continuing our parent workshops um, and looking at various other programs to improve our therapeutic services that we offer students and also re-examining all of our psychological evaluation procedures, uh, psychiatric evaluation procedures in the district as a whole um, to ensure that we're providing students with everything they need on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present tonight, um, and I um, wish you all a very good night.
I just want to make a quick comment, Dr. Tu. I just want to commend you and your staff of fine professionals. Uh, our special needs program in Oldbridge is very progressive, and we treat all students um, with um, with equ equity, and that goes a long way. And uh, we've had uh, an incredible experience uh, with our special needs program, and and people come to Oldbridge for it, and we should be all commended for it. And your fine professionals and your department has done an extraordinary job. And I'm speaking on the behalf of the entire board when we deal with you uh, specifically concerning your requests. I know that we are very open to giving you the resources uh, because we feel that a fair and equitable solution to our special needs population is important. And uh, thank you for your efforts and, and all your wonderful staff members with the special needs department. Thank you. Any board members would like to say a few words on the special needs department or? Nope. Okay, so moving forward, facilities use. The board acknowledges and it's on file at the business office. Yeah, yes, Mr. Dunn. Yes, yes. Uh, many, so many possible. folks move into Oldbridge because of the special program that we have here for the special needs. We have one of the best programs probably in the state. Thank you. I concur with you 100% with that, Mr. Solikowski. I'm very proud of our special needs program. Anyone else? Okay, moving forward. Hearing of the residents on agenda items only. Yes, sir. Go to the podium and uh, press the uh, button to uh, turn your microphone on. The button that's on the microphone itself, it's purple. Okay. All right, good evening. Uh, my name is Joe Ortiz, and I've been a resident uh, in Old Bridge, New Jersey since 2003. Um, I'd also like to concur with the gentleman and with Mr. Dunn about the special needs program in our district. Awesome. My son participated in it, and it did uh, incredible things for him. I think that our uh, school system here in Oldbridge and our police are awesome. Um, so again, my name is Joe Ortiz. I've lived here since 2003, and I have two children that attend the McDivitt School. Uh, my son is 11, and my daughter is 8. Um, and I'm here to talk about so school security. Um, so one week after the Parkland, Florida tragedy, I emailed Mr. Dunn to inquire as to, well, I'll read it real quick. I wanted to know what we were doing, if we were doing anything different following that tragedy. And uh, one of the uh, paragraphs that I wrote reads, school violence and the threat of something like this happening in our school district is something that's on my mind just about every day. Every morning when I drop my children off at school, I pray to God that the school be shielded and protected. I'm sure that many parents in our city and across the country feel the same way and pray the same prayer. It is a sad and unfortunate truth. Um, so Mr. Dunn and I exchanged a couple of emails and understandably, Mr. Dunn reassured me uh, but was not able to share uh, many details because we don't want a lot of that stuff to be made public. And then that's just common sense. Um, so I did feel somewhat reassured. Um, uh, part of Mr. Dunn's uh, response uh, was that we're doing everything humanly possible to ensure the safety of our students. Um, our comprehensive security program has been recognized throughout the state. Future enhancements based upon the recent tragic events in Florida will strengthen our program so that it will rival other schools. Um, that was a great answer. I, I did respond. I wanted to specifically ask about one thing, a couple of things, but one thing in particular. Um, I also met with Ms. Coletti to discuss this uh, as well. Ms. Coletti is the uh, principal at, at, at the uh, McDivitt School. Um, shortly after the tragedy in Parkland, East Brunswick, Monroe, and Edison Townships uh, moved to um, having an armed guard at every school uh, every day. That's my understanding. East Brunswick announced it first, and then Monroe, and then Edison. Um, this morning, at Great Mills High School in Maryland, there was another shooting. A 17-year-old pulled out a gun and shot two of his students, but a school resource officer engaged him and stopped the threat. So who knows how many lives that officer saved. Um, So that leads me to, to ask this. 
I know that you can't share all the details with us, but I'd like to know about the hardening up of our schools. Are we doing anything with monitoring social media? Are we doing any extra training um, for our teachers and all the staff that works at the schools to, uh, you know, to react appropriately in, in the case of an active shooter? And most importantly, and referring again to this, the shooting down in uh, Maryland today, are we headed in the direction of uh, armed school resource officers in our schools? Um, and if we're not, I'd like to know why not. Because I feel that at this point, we're, we're at that point. It's my feeling that across the country we need to do this, you know, because it certainly isn't happening in Washington, and it needs to happen at the local level. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Mr. Ortiz, I'm going to have uh, our, uh, our, our superintendent of schools answer the question, but I can reassure you again that this Board of Education and this administration take safety of our schools and students very, very seriously. And I commend you for worrying about that because we're all parents and we all have those worries. And again, we are doing everything humanly possibly to ensure that our schools are well protected. And I'll allow David uh, Cittadino to explain further within reason on what we can share with you tonight on what we're doing. Thank you, Mr. Ortiz. Um, sh shortly after the shooting at Sandy Hook School, this Board of Education came together and was uh, committed to hardening our schools and providing armed police officers in our schools. We sh entered into a shared services agreement with the township to do just that, expanding the program of SROs that we have and enter into what at the time was the first and original SLEO 2 program within a public school system. A SLEO 2 or Special 2 is a police officer who's received a certificate from a, they can do it independently um, or they can be retired, but they received a police officer training through an academy. And many of them you see at working at like um, Sandy Hook or all the way down to Seaside, they're usually summertime, um, either retirees from a police department or uh, young officers looking to catch on with a full-time position. So the Olbers Police Department did a great job in recruiting one out and uh, brought them to the township. What I don't give out is the numbers of how many we have and how many we employ throughout the schools because I don't want people to say, well, you know, start putting numbers together and say, well, if there's so many here, then they can't be there and start putting that, put, putting that together. I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say. Um, since the shooting at Parkland, uh, we met the next day with the police department and we expanded that program even further immediately, starting the ne very next morning, uh, with more armed officers in our schools. And as a matter of last week, we met again to expand into the possibility of a SLEO 3 or Special 3 program, which was recently adopted by the state of New Jersey and is on the docket for the town council to approve because all of the officers we use are through the Oldbridge Police Department. We do not have any um, while we have retired security guards in our schools, they do not carry. Anyone who carries in the district, uh, carries a weapon, is through the Oldbridge Police Department. Um, we've, ex we've entered into conversations with them to contract to have that program expand even further to the areas in which to your, you're looking, to the numbers that you're looking at. Um, we've also entered into conversations with the Department of Education into another program, which will be the first of the kind in the state of New Jersey. Um, I cannot give the details as to that, but they're looking as to us as to be the li liaisons on this and um, really to strengthen the uh, exteriors of our schools. One of the other, some of the other areas that you touched upon, but I do not uh, go into detail with, is the intelligence which we've gathered. We have brought on at least two other agencies that give us intelligence as to um, threats to the external part of our school, whether through um, internet threats or um, even email, and, and I'm sure everyone here knows about the WeTip program that we do, uh, where anyone can go on WeTip.com or use the WeTip phone number to uh, notify us anonymously if there's any th threat to the community or to our schools. And since that's been adopted, 
Um, I've been notified about five times, nothing to, you know, the nature of a threat to the physical part of a school, but to illegal activities that may be happening, and, and it certainly has helped us. Um, as far as the training, the week after Parkland, uh, we put together a special committee of two parts. One is a school security committee that is looking at specialized training that our staff needs and other ways to um, increase our security within the schools. And the second part is a social emotional committee to address the com concerns that our parents and our students have about these type of incidents and how best to communicate those concerns with them. And both of those committees are coming out with information that we made to the public uh, within the next 30 days. Um, I, I assure you that uh, obviously time is of the essence. Each one of these, uh, each one of these in instances of violence in our schools, you know, rattles me a little bit more each time. And you know, it's like you can't act fast enough, and you can't change the way things are fast enough. And I had to say this on another topic today, but complacency is the enemy. And as soon as you think you have it all figured out, there's another way in which um, evil or danger uh, tries to get towards our children. And it's, you know, the thing that keeps me awake every night just thinking about it. So we will be doing more. Um, I'm sure within the next six months, you're going to see even more drastic things um, going on in our schools. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, the level three mm -hmm. thing that you mentioned, okay. it sounded a little Chinese to me. Okay. Um, did I hear that correctly, that we're kind of moving, we are moving in the direction of, of these officers at each school? So the, the special threes are officers who can only work in schools. They're retired police officers. None of them are these. That's right. Okay. Special threes are the are retired officers that can only work in schools. None of them are the... Uh, typical uh, young professional trying to be, get into a police department. These are all retired police officers from a school and they must have retired within the, the recent last two years to be eligible for this program. Uh, and that's what they are. They'd be assigned to each school if the program is successful. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're, they're all licensed to arm and carry through the Old Bridge Police Department. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Stone, can I add something, please? Absolutely, Mr. Mr. Ortiz, Freeman? you mentioned uh, monitoring social media. Just last night, I went to a safety, uh, internet safety seminar in one of our schools. I, we, it's out there. The programs are out there. It wasn't very well attended, but it, it was there. A gentleman gave a very nice uh, presentation on what to look for, how to monitor what your children are doing, and so on and so on. So we got that covered, too. Any other board members like to comment on school sec security since it was just brought up? I don't see anyone else. Anyone else? In the audience would like to discuss anything on the agenda this evening? Yes, sir. How are you? Good evening, board. Uh, sorry for the attire, but we've been out all day. Uh, we actually took 330 students to the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island today. And it was cold, but it was great and very successful, and we appreciate your cooperation in letting us uh, have such a great trip every year. Um, the reason I'm here tonight is actually to um, really sort of be a role model for my students and let them show you how much they care. Uh, we are studying the progressive era in social studies in eighth grade, so, uh, eighth grade in Salk and Sandberg. And what we're learning about, of course, is how uh, throughout history Americans have made great strides to make life better for the people, not just for themselves. Uh, of course, looking at history's lessons, we try to apply them today. Um, and as we were doing this, of course, a few weeks ago, the tragedy down in Parkland happened. And of course, uh, one of the first things we did, we said, you know, you take tragedy to turn it into some type of progress. And the, the students have read some articles and have analyzed, you know, what could they do? And we looked at what these kids were doing from Florida, which is pretty amazing. And they talked about how they were using social media, the media, uh, cooperation with their parents, and not being afraid to speak up. So I kind of charged the students with doing something like that, about making some type of change. Um, I wanted to make sure I covered everything. I'm sorry. Um, we talked about engaging. So my students, what they've been doing is we've been reading articles, discussing. They have great 
conversations using our Office 365 teams. Uh, sometimes I give them prompts, well mostly I give them prompts where we have readings and they share their ideas. And we've been doing that for about a month. And we got to the point now, we, we look back and in the past week or two we said, okay, it's been over a month and Congress hasn't done anything. And one of the big topics of course is about, you know, gun control comes up a lot. And I said, well listen, you can't even vote yet. Look at what you have the power to do. And what, of course, what that comes to is over their own lives, and that comes to you to the board. So I've uh, charged my students with coming up with some ideas that they could share to the board. Um, let me just double check, make sure I missed everything. So I gave them cards, they wrote questions. Now, of course, the tough part with younger students is getting them to actually speak, but I did want to thank a couple of the students that did come out here. Now, I did actually send out a note to my kids to not come tonight. I guess, and because of the weather, do not come out, and they still did come out, so I really do thank them. Uh, the rest of my students are actually at home watching this. They had a homework assignment that if they couldn't be here, they're to be watching it on television and, of course, using their Office 365 for an assignment, including they should be having a conversation sort of like, uh, you know, I guess when they live tweet when you're watching something on TV, I don't, I don't do that, but. So, you know, it's, again, it's getting them engaged and then tomorrow in class, we're gonna discuss, hopefully tomorrow in class, <laughs> we'll have a discussion about <laughs> everything, <laughs> about everything that uh, has been discussed here. Um, so if I could, I just wanna uh, introduce, actually I have Rohan Patel who made it out tonight. Arnesh B was here, he had to leave. I have Anthony Toronto. Michaela Fenton, Sabrina Stark. So I really want to thank them and their parents, by the way, who came out here in this horrible weather. So thank you for doing it. Because truthfully, if you look at it, I mean, this is it. They're, they're doing something academic and something great. I mean, having five, six students here on a horrible night shows that these kids, really, I mean, you see it, these kids are really determined. They care about what's going on. So as I collected their cards and their ideas and questions, I have to say they were, I, I, I'm, Whenever I give them a charge to do something, the results I get, as much as I've been doing this forever, right, Mr. Dinoff, I, I, I'm so pleasantly surprised at it, and, uh, and I was. So, because they don't want to talk too much, and I don't like making do, um, their biggest concern was sort of what we just talked about, and it was a lot of those ideas we spoke about, and I know you can't express it, and I, I reassure my kids all the time when they came up with these ideas, we're afraid, and I stand up there and confidently say, you're in the safest place you'll ever be. You know, when you're outside in the neighborhood, I love Old Bridge, I've been here forever. You're safer in school. When you're home, you're actually safer in school. You are in the safest place you could be when you're in any of our schools, I know that. However, in seeing my 120 students or so, I do see when we discuss this, you know, they're, they're afraid. They're, they're definitely afraid. And as I know we cannot discuss these things, I just think we need to make some little adjustment that we could actually reassure the students exactly, not exactly, just reassure them some way that they are, and they don't have to just trust me, I'm pretty sure they do, but something else to kind of just reassure them so they know, because I, I promise you, I promise you, they're doing it, they're concerned. The fact that we got them here on a night like this and the way they're participating with me, I, I, if you ask them to do something to make the school safer, they would do it. And there's not a kid that I could think of that wouldn't do it, and, and I know their parents are behind them, and they've backed them very much. So I'm asking is for them to just kind of give them a little bit of reassurance. And I think, I think that's, am I missing anything, guys? Anybody want to say anything at all? Ms. Stark? You want to say something, well, you're pretty good. Can I ask you a question? Sure, absolutely, and, I, and they did have questions, so I'm gonna let her ask you a question. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, I did not plan on speaking tonight, but I do have a question actually. So last week, we, the students, they made a plan to walk out into the hallways, but of course, for safety reasons, I understand we could not. Are, is Carl Sandberg or Salk doing anything to recognize what happened in Florida for the shooting? The difficult the difficult thing in deciding what would be best universal for a middle school is to do it from my level. I wouldn't want to do that because I don't know each one of you in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. The difference between a sixth grader and eighth grader and what they're ready to accept and to know is, is tremendous. Um, I, I leave that best to the professionals in your classroom. Um, you have great teacher, Mr. Lenegro, and starts off in, in the sixth grade with the same teachers. 
that they're better to have those conversations with you than me say, well, here's something you should discuss with them, or here's something they're ready for. I know at the high school level, uh, they approached me, asked me, and had a conversation with me about things that they wanted to discuss and how they wanted to do it. It really didn't require much of my guidance or uh, restrictions on them. Um, they had a very good uh, mindset. So if you want to have that same conversation, and I can sit with uh, students from 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade, and hear your ideas personally, and then kind of assess if, if everything is great appropriate, then we can go from there. But for me to say, you know, this conversation is great appropriate for everyone is, 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 is irresponsible because not everyone's ready to hear the same messages in 6th grade as they're in 8th grade. If I can also follow up on that, if you don't mind to answer you a couple of things. First of all, this was one of the things that I had expressed to the students is better to get our ideas across. But I think that kind of shows that, you know, kids do want to be heard. And that's why I do ask for a reassurance that, you know, when our middle school students knew what was going on in the high school, they felt, wow, look, they're getting an opportunity to express something. And we weren't. And I did explain to them, to tell you the truth. I said, hey, they organized it. I told them I was here last month when they asked you about it, and, and they did it. Now, of course, 11 to 14-year-olds don't always think of that in advance. Uh, but I must also say that Dr. Simon has done an excellent job uh, opening up to ideas. And we do have, who's, doing, who's making the video? Do you remember who's making the video? Diana Torres. I'm sorry? Diana. Diana Torres and a few other eighth grade students uh, are making a video to uh, share with the students from Parkland, and, and we are trying to coordinate efforts. Uh, and she is always open to ideas, Dr. Simon. But truthfully, again, my, my part, and I know other social studies teachers were become civically active. That's the best thing we could do, and that's why I ask for the reassurance. Anybody else? Anthony, come on, you're itching. Thank you. Sure. Miss Fenton, come on over. Thank you. Okay, I wasn't planning on speaking either, but... Um, one of my concerns is all the students that like sit alone or don't have many friends or anything like that, what are we like telling other students or trying to encourage other students to do like go out and out of their way to sit next to somebody or include them in one of their activities or something like that? It's another very good, very good question, and I know a lot of the questions that you're bringing up in reference to um, including or not ostracizing students or, those, or, or identifying those students who are struggling to make those friendships and relationships. We cover a lot of that in our character education programs throughout, throughout the course of the year. But there's an interesting um, program I'm looking at, and kind of when I spoke to Dr. Hoker about it and we spoke to a company, it's not something that I, I can't share. It is, I think, something that would be perfect for the middle school, whereas students receive school perception surveys through, through um, your, your devices, whether your phone, and you could chime in and say, and the question might be, um, I know a student in my seventh period class who uh, has struggled making friends, yes or no? You would answer yes or no. And if the teacher in that class doesn't identify who you are, but receives out of 25 students, receives like 20 yeses, then it's a strong indicator that there's someone in there who is struggling to make those friendships. So we're looking to pilot that kind of information because, the, the, again, like I talked about intelligence before um, with the gentleman who's up here, the best intelligence we have is the perspectives of the students um, because of the nature of what happens in uh, Parkland and other school shooting areas, um, usually the students know first. And that's why we're looking for information, but this is more of a, a survey that takes place um, quickly and, and dis distributes the information to the teachers so they know if there's a student um, that may be struggling academically, but also a student who might be struggling socially, emotionally. Okay, thank you. I was just wanted to try and figure out more. I know myself, I try to like include, uh, like I use my, I don't wanna say popularity, but I use my popularity to try and include like kids that won't have as many friends as I do or people to confide in or anything like that. So, that's what I mean. Well, 
maybe if I need some help with popularity, I'll come get you and you can help me out. Um, but th thank you for that. And I see, is that a, is that a peer shirt you're wearing too? No, no, no. no. But that's a great program we have too, because it reminded me of, of the peer program that we have as well that kind of targets that. So um, I may be reaching out to you soon. I may need some help. Good. Thank, thank you. you. Anybody else? That's good. I do want to say that I feel comfortable in saying that our schools are safer every day and they're not where I would love them to be. And, you know, how many times have you heard me say it, the largest room in any organization is the room for improvement and we strive to improve every day uh, and we're getting better every day. And, you know, the fact that an outside agency said we're the eighth safest school district in the state of New Jersey speaks volumes to that. And because they have the data, they have, they know about our programs. Um, they know things that maybe members of the public don't know. Uh, and that's what they use as their measuring stick to, to make that decision. Um, but, you know, I, I would like to see us at number one. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lenegro. Mr. O'Neill. Thank you. Um, I'd like to talk about finance item number four. It is the uh, approval of the ESIP payment to Honeywell. I really want to talk about the larger issue of the ESIP program and some of the impacts that it's having. Um, the program is, of course, meant to save the district money by saving energy, and I applaud that. And in many ways, I'm sure that it's working great, but there have been some problems that have arisen. Um, when the temperature changed in our first year with this new program, uh, we noticed that there were some problems with the Honeywell's new thermostat system program um, in some way. And there were many problems, and many of the problems were fixed. But throughout the winter, there have been a, a handful of classrooms that have had recurring problems uh, to varying levels of severity uh, that have been consistent. And though it doesn't seem like it, it's spring now. Um, and I have addressed the issue through the proper channels multiple times, but I just want the board to understand that there are still some significant problems. So some of these, uh, just a handful of classrooms have shown uh, temperatures that have been in the 50s and 60s uh, at points throughout the past few months. Um, and the problem isn't just that it's accepted that the rooms are cold. Uh, the problem is really a structural problem with some of these rooms. So to take one room, for example, the thermostat is on the wall um, that faces the hallway. That is, uh, that the other side of the wall is the hallway. And in the hallway, there is a heater that's pumping out heat. So it's heating that wall. So the thermostat and that wall actually says that it's 75 degrees in the room. But if you go to the rug that the children sit on for when they do circle time and such, the temperature, uh, the surface temperature of that rug goes as low as 59 degrees. So uh, I understand that it's not necessarily an easy fix, but what I've seen mostly from the ESIP program is mostly the tweaking of the thermostat. And that has been, there have been efforts to fix the problem using those methods throughout the winter, but it's not doing enough to solve the problem because one side of the room is at sometimes 76 degrees while the other side is 64. And I know that there are some explanations for some of those disparities. Heat rises so the floor would be cooler. It is on a slab of concrete. Um, it's closer to the window. But whatever those explanations are, the fact of the matter is the children sit on those rugs. And so they are sitting on something that is, in my opinion, um, an inappropriate temperature. So I hope that the board will uh, look into this issue and try to see what changes can be made as part of the ESA program to solve uh, problems beyond the adjustment of the thermostats. Thank you. Mr. O'Neill, what I'm going to do is we're going to have a buildings and grounds meeting uh, in the very near future. We had one scheduled for next week. However, that was postponed. And I will make sure that the Mr. Mara puts that on uh, one of the uh, topics to be discussed. And we will uh, discuss with uh, Frank Fazita and Kevin Canton. And also, if we have to, we'll call in uh, Honeywell to come in and, and to explain the concerns that you've just conveyed uh, here in public. Thank you, sir. I would suggest when that meeting is made public, we send an invitation to Mr. O'Neill to maybe join us. Anyone else hearing at a residence on the agenda items only? If I don't see anyone else, I'm going to close this portion of the agenda. Now close, moving forward.
policy. May I have a motion to move policy, please? To carry a motion. Thank you. May I have a second, please? Lynn, second. Thank you, Ms. Lynn. Discussion of concern? Mr. Mayor, roll call, please. Prima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolution 1 passes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, curriculum professional development. Items 1 through 6 may have a motion, please. Dinoff will move curriculum and professional development. Items 1 through 6. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. May I have a second? Callie will second. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Concerns or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 6 pass. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, athletics. Items 1 and 2. May I have a motion, please? Callie will move. Thank you, Mrs. Callie. May I have a second? To Carol, a second. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Any concerns or discussion? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. To Carol? Yes. To Prima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolution 1 and 2. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, finance may have a motion for items 1 through 15. Dinoff will move. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. DePrima. Any discussion or concerns with finance? Yeah, I'd like to separate number 14, please. Separating number 14, Mr. Solkowski. Anything else? Very well. Roll call on items 1 through 13 and 15. Reed? Yes. Solkowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Done? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 13 and 15 pass. Thank you, oh. Mr. Mayor. Point 14. Any concerns or discussion with item 14? Not seeing any. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Reed? Mr. Reed? Yes. Sulikowski? No. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? No. Dunn? Yes. Resolution 14 passes. Moving forward, non certificated personnel office items 1 and 2. And we do have a retirement. Would someone please read that into the record? I'll read it. Thank you, um, Mr. DePrima. Move the board approve the retirement of the following staff members with deep appreciation for their years of dedicated service to the district. Fran Edelman, Oak Ridge High School Main Building, 30 years. Thank you for everything, Ms. Edelman, and good luck in your future endeavors. Oh, uh, leave, of, leave of absence. Thank you, Mr. DePrima. Any discussion or concerns? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Nope, I'm sorry. I didn't have a, I didn't move the uh, non-certificate personnel. Okay, can I have a motion, please? Callie, I'll move. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Second? Dinoff will second. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Discussion, concerns? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Mr. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Done? Yes. Resolutions 1 and 2. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, non certificated personnel operational item one. May I have a motion, please? De Carroll, motion. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Can I have a second? I'll move. I'll Thank second. you, Mr. Prima. Concern or discussion? Not seeing anything. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Sulikowski? Yes. Kelly? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dino? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolution 1 passed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, non certificated personnel, other items 1 and 2. May I have a motion, please? Callie will move. Thank you, Ms. Callie. May I have a second? Lent will second it. Thank you, Ms. Lent. Discussion or concern? Not seeing any. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolution 1 and 2 pass. Very well. Moving forward. Certificated personnel items 1 through 12, and I believe we have a... Reed will motion. Okay. May I have a second? Dinoff will second. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Uh, right. One note on... Just to repeat that, I forgot to put my mic on. Uh, there was a, there was a administrative correction on item number five under certified resolutions, and it's in the attachment D four A. Nancy Sakali Sharon was removed, and Richard Sorrentino was added to that schedule. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. May Mr. I have a board member read into the record uh, retirees for certificated personnel? Mr. Dunn, since I did the other, I'd like to do this one, too, because I happen to know these people. Absolutely. My pleasure. Go ahead, Mr. Prima. Move the board approve the retirement of the following staff members with deep appreciation for their years of dedicated service to the district. Barbara England, Jonas Salk Middle School, ELA, 26 years. David Rosen, Glenn School Psychologist, 28 years. Christine Hounsel, Jonas Salk Middle School Librarian, 15 years. There's about 70 years of service between those three people. Thank you for everything you've done. Good luck in your future endeavors. And I don't know if you're watching, but I, I happen to know Mrs. England personally. Uh, about a million years ago, I served on county PTA with her. So I just want to say thank you for helping me out with that, and thank you for everything you've done for the students of Oldbridge. Uh, additionally, I would like to uh, congratulate Mr. Rosen uh, for his retirement. He has served the Oldbridge Public Schools special needs population for over 28 years. He was instrumental in, 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 in a lot of our uh, new endeavors and us becoming a very progressive district and, and he was dedicated to the children for many, many years. I had the pleasure of dealing with Mr. Rosen with my own situation with my special needs daughter and I think he made this a better place. So thank you, David Rosen, for your years of service. Any discussion or concern? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 12 passed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, non certificated personnel transportation items 1 through 3. May I have a motion, please? Callie will move. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Can I have a second? Lent will second. Thank you, Ms. Lent. Discussion of concern with transportation? Roll call, Mr. Mayor. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 3. Pat. Supplies, equipment, and services. Items 1 and 2. May I have a motion, please? I'll move. Thank you, sir. May I have a second? Reed will second. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Any concerns or discussion? 
Not seeing any. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 and 2 pass. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward. Transportation items 1 through 9. May I have a motion, please? DeCaro, motion. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Can I have a second? Callie will second. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Concerns or discussion? Not seeing any. Roll call, please. Lent? Yes. Reed? Yes. Sulikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 9. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, miscellaneous. Items one through five. May I have a motion to move miscellaneous? Dinoff will move. Thank you, Mr. Dinoff. Can I have a second? Lent will second it. Thank you, Ms. Lent. Any concern or discussion? Yes, Mr. Dunn, I'd just like to point out in item number one, those uh, board meeting dates were all moved up seven days. So they originally, uh, April 10th and 17th, and due to vacation and some traveling, uh, they've been moved to the 17th and the 24th. Very well, thank you, sir. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Reed? Yes. Solikowski? Yes. Callie? Yes. DeCaro? Yes. DePrima? Yes. Dinoff? Yes. Lent? Yes. Dunn? Yes. Resolutions 1 through 4. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving forward, hearing of the residents on any school district items. This is your time to speak. I see already a volunteer, Ms. Kelly Ellis Forster. Thank you. A wonderful advocate of our school district. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted uh, a few things just to, to mention. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to give a, a really big thank you and a shout out to our character ambassadors. Um, this year is the 10th um, year of our Old Bridge Relay for Life, and this year we're having a little earlier, we're having it on May 19th. And um, as usual, the district is, is a huge part of that. And this year, the character ambassadors are taking this on uh, as a challenge and, and helping with all kinds of fundraisers and awareness. And this past Sunday at the ice skating rink, they had an ice skating party. Uh, and it was, it was great fun. It was a beautiful day. Uh, and they raised over $1,300. So it was, it was a great, great event. Um, I can tell you right now, the district as a whole has uh, nine teams already signed up, and that's a combination of staff and students. Um, and there's several other fundraisers um, that are happening throughout uh, the district that the schools are uh, doing, and it's mostly student-led, which is just great to see. Um, and one thing coming up, uh, you know, our, the uh, Old Bridge PBA was here earlier. They are sponsoring a softball tournament uh, game uh, that's going to be the night of um, uh, spring tailgate on May 1st. And it is going to be a game with the Old Bridge PD against the uh, Old Bridge High School uh, faculty and staff. So uh, we're looking forward to that. That'll be another fun event. Um, one other thing coming up Sunday, I just wanted to make sure people were aware of, especially if you have a high schooler. Um, this Sunday, the 25th, at the uh, Grade 9 Center, there is a glass slipper boutique which are free prom dresses for anybody who uh, could need them for a prom, a military ball, or, or whatever they have um, at no charge. So that's from uh, 12 to 4 um, this coming Sunday. Um, and one other thing I wanted to make a note, because we had our, our uh, you know, young students out here from, the, uh, from Sandburg talking. I was fortunate enough to be at school, at the high school last week, when they had their student response to Parkland. And what uh, they called it was a night line. So you know, when, with the mascot of night, you can do a lot of interesting things with it. Uh, but what they chose to do in consultation with the administration, and so those students who said they want to see a change is, you are the ones who can do it. You, you can make it happen. And I was so, so impressed by our students. And at, uh, at a designated time, the students who chose to participate walked down to the hall and locked arms and formed a night line, um, and then went into the auditorium. Uh, there were over a thousand students. I think they had to stop letting students in for safety reasons into the auditorium. But then they really just talked 
about what it meant to them and the impact it had onto them. So while I know a lot of students walked outside, um, this was really a chance for them to voice their feelings and what they thought, and they could register to vote, they could write to their representatives. Uh, there was a student video, and other students got up and talked, and I thought it was just a great way for them to express what they were feeling about it, um, and how they could actually take action and make a difference. So I was just totally uh, impressed by them, and uh, uh, they're just an inspiration. So uh, the middle school kids, I think you can get to your faculty, they'll support you, and, and uh, you, know, you guys are the change, so just wonderful. Thank you so much there, Kelly Ellis Foster. Anyone else on any school-related items? Yes, sir. Mr. Murphy, correct? Correct. You sure did. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I also wasn't planning on speaking this evening, but uh, middle school students inspired me. I just want to commend them for coming out tonight on this nasty night. And it amazes me how mature and knowledge these kids are today. When I was in middle school, I would have never stood up here and spoke in front of a group like this. So great job, guys. Um, now, I don't even know how to approach this. Can I ask Mr. City a no question, or do I have to address somebody else about this? Monday evening, you're having a superintendent's forum. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. If anyone's watching on television, and there's not many people here, if you have not, never attended one of them, I encourage you to. Uh, they're usually not very well attended, but Dr. Holker and Mr. Cittadino are very, very accommodating. Um, and they're very informative meetings, so I do encourage you to get to it if you can. If you have any questions, they will answer them. The other thing I want to speak about is we've seen in the media, Today, mainly, the uh, mandatory opium meetings you're holding. I do not have an eighth grade student. I have a sixth grade student among a fourth grader and a kindergarten. Can my wife and I attend one of them without having an eighth grade student? There'll be enough room at the, uh, the, the meeting 26 on the 26th at, at Sandberg. So we could just go and sign in there? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Anyone else before I close this portion of the meeting? Going once, going twice, moving forward. Old business, Mr. Mayor. Any new business? All right, so then we have an adjournment, but we will have to go into executive session. I want you to have one item, Mr. Cedino. This will be unprecedented, it's never happened this way before, but I just received the latest weather report. And it is not good. By daybreak, it was supposed to start. It was, you know, it's, it keeps moving back. And it, as the, the time frame moves back, the totals keep moving up. So we're looking at a daybreak snowfall with continued um, increasing volume of snow uh, starting shortly after daybreak and now they moved Old Bridge because I get a report just for Old Bridge to the 12 to 16 inch range so shortly after we adjourn I'm gonna send out the information that unfortunately school will be closed tomorrow there this obviously will impact the spring break as the board uh, voted on the calendar tonight uh, making April 5th a school day I am sorry, people. <laughs> you know, I can't do anything about this. I'm uh, as upset as most of uh, the children are and the adults. Um, it just doesn't end. It's unre unrelenting this winter, and it's nor'easter after nor'easter. And uh, important, most important thing, as I say all the time, student safety, staff safety. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a mess tomorrow. The uh, state has already issued a um, state of emergency for the entire state tomorrow. Thank you. Before we adjourn, I just want to ask the board if they want to have a good of the order. Um, yes, yes please. and yes, please. we'll start from my right to left. So, Ms. Callie, okay. you can start. Um, 
first I want to commend the uh, eighth grade students who came out. That it, it definitely, I get nervous sitting up here and I'm 57 years old. So it, it takes a lot of courage to get up and I applaud you for your efforts. I have um, recently read uh, in a couple of places on social media about a, um, a program, don't know if that's the right word, but maybe a suggestion for the, uh, the middle schools. It's, um, I think it was called Stand Up. Um, and rather than walking out, it was Stand Up and encourage all of your peers, all of the students, to do 14 things in memory of the 14 students, uh, 14 people, rather, uh, that, um, whose lives were taken. 17, sorry. 17 students. 17 people, I'm sorry. See, I said I get nervous talking up here. Um, to do 17 things, reach out 17 times to a student that you think could use a friend or is, I mean, even if they're struggling in, a, in a, a subject, but 17 good things. And I think that that would be a great way to start. Um, and again, I, I thank you for coming out. Um, I also just wanted to express my personal condolences to Ms. Morris's family and congratulations to our retirees. Thank you for your years of dedicated service to our students. And lastly, thank you to PBA 127 for their generous donation to our elementary schools. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Callie. Mr. Caro. Yes. Uh, my microphone. So I, I'd really like to thank uh, Ms. Delanegro for, um, for the program. Um, you know, it, it's so important that we engage our children and allow them to speak because they have these fears. These things are happening to them. And I think it's so important that even in a middle school level that you're allowing them to engage and speak and, and, and have that dialogue with them. So thank you very much for that. And, 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 a lot, and all of the teachers you know, that are doing that because um, they have a lot to say. And I know that they're, they've been impacted so much by this. And um, even at a young age, at a middle school age, they, they know what's going on, they feel it. And, and uh, I've always said, you know, these kids are, so smart and so intuitive and um, so I appreciate that that you all are doing that and and allowing them and thank you guys for coming out tonight um, so uh, and also you know I wasn't able to be at last month's meeting so and I apologize for that and um, so I just wanted to let the parents that came out and the parents that came tonight uh, Mr. Ortiz that came tonight um, I appreciate all of your concerns and um, see, I can't even speak <laughs> in public either. Um, I appreciate your concerns and um, regarding school safety. Um, and I am confident in our administration, Mr. Cittadino and our administration, that they are on top of whatever needs to be done, will be done. Um, and we, uh, me as a board member, I support what they are doing. Um, I'd also like to thank the uh, Old Bridge BBA I can't speak tonight. Oldbridge PBA uh, Local 127. Uh, thank you, and the students will appreciate all of the uh, recess equipment. And uh, I think that's it. Also, um, also my deepest condolences to uh, the family of Louise Mar Morris. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Caro. Mr. DePrima. Thank you. Uh, as my colleagues have said before me, I see there's still a couple of students out here. You guys are going to make the difference. Just keep doing what you're doing, and. and Hopefully the world will be better because of you. Um, I've said it before, your parents put us up here. You, they entrusted us with the most precious commodity in the world, their children, and we're gonna do everything we can to make the school even better than it is. That's our responsibility, the students of Oldbridge, and that, that's all we're up here for. So thank you for caring and just know that we do too. And of course, thank you to the PBA for your most generous uh, donation of, I guess, gym equipment, sports supplies. That's it. Thank you, Mr. DePrima. Mr. Dinoff. Yes, thank you. I would like to thank the Old Bridge Police Officers Benevolent Association for their generous donation of the recess equipment to all 12 schools. Um, it's such a great and impressive donation that they made to us, and it's an excellent community partnership. So we thank them so much for their support. I'd also like to thank Mr. El Negro and his students very much for coming today and sharing your concerns and questions with us. Please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Um, and I hope Mr. El Negro um, passes it along to other uh, teachers as well and encourages their students to do the same. We really love to hear from you 
you are the future leaders. Actually, um, you're already leaders and you're trailblazers. And, and it's amazing work, it's really inspiring. And I thank you so much for everything. Please continue to be, reach out, continue to be civically engaged until you're old enough to run for office and do it straight away because the future belongs to you and it's yours to shape. And I'd just like to thank Mr. Onegro again as a former student for his amazing facilitation and his teaching style. And it really shapes the lives of so many students, including mine, and I can't thank him enough for everything that he's done. Thank you. And everyone, please stay safe tomorrow in the snow. Um, and we'll worry about the calendar after. Just stay safe for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dinoff. Ms. Lynn. Um, I'm basically going to repeat what everybody else just mentioned down the line. I want to thank the Old Bridge Police Department for their donations. I think it's amazing um, what they did, and I'm sure the children would truly appreciate that. Um, I also want to thank the students for coming out. Um, like everyone said, we're way older than you, and we all still get nervous speaking. So I think it's fantastic that you had the courage to get up and voice your opinions, voice your concerns, and just know that we are listening, that you are our main priority, and we're doing everything to keep you guys safe inside your school. Um, the young lady that mentioned uh, reaching out to other students and everything, we do in my household what's called random act of kindness. And every day we try just to do something just random for someone else that would benefit them. And basically what you were saying earlier is exactly that. And that's fantastic. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. And if you have any concerns, um, if you hear something, see something, speak up. You have an amazing teacher there that's listening to you. So just, co just keep the communication open. And everyone enjoy your snow day. I'm sure a lot of people will be happy. I unfortunately have to go to work, but enjoy your day off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lent. Yes, sir. Whoop. Mr. Reed doesn't have anything to say today, uh, it can, <laughs> except you, for Mr. congratulations Reed. to those students that came here today. Thank you. Mr. Solikowski. I echo all the statements that the Board of Education members said. Also, uh, good luck to all our new hirees. There was quite a few of them over here today. And uh, good luck to the four people that retired. They had a total of 99 years of service to the Overton Township Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sulikowski. And, and one thing I just want to sum up is basically this, this community is an incredible uh, town. And we all come together uh, for, 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 for our children and for our community. And, and that's what we just echoed up here, you know, between uh, PBA 127, between the parents' involvement with all the speakers who came up and spoke uh, during the agenda session. We all have a vested interest in this community, and we all work together for the betterment of this school district and our town. And, and that's what makes Old Bridge special. And that's what drives me to continue my endeavor with being on the Board of Education and serving as a first responder. Uh, I find uh, that uh, the community as a whole um, makes Old Bridge great, and everyone has a, a fair and equitable um, responsibility, um, but our 70,000 residents come out and, and they do things that amaze me, and that's what makes Old Bridge great. So with that said, I want to thank everyone for coming this evening. Please stay safe tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a very treacherous day. And uh, like our uh, superintendent said, schools will be closed tomorrow. And uh, with that, have a good evening and stay safe. We're going to executive session and our yes. attorney will explain why. Mr. Dunn, you need a motion for executive session for two personnel status issues and one brief issue of attorney-client privilege regarding school security. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. Uh, motion. motion first. Dinoff will move. Dinoff. Callie. Aye. 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 What, happened, what would happen if we all opposed? Okay. Going into full session. Oh. What? Yeah. I, I know. I